Time for another Walking Dead rankings video. We just finished The Walking Dead Season 11 with what I think was a beautiful series finale of The Walking Dead titled Rest in Peace. And while the main Walking Dead show may be over with, The Walking Dead story will continue with various spin-off shows in the future. But since The Walking Dead Season 11 is over with, it's time to re-rank The Walking Dead seasons from my least favorite to my favorite to include Season 11 of The Walking Dead. Before I do that, though, pretty important. If you aren't caught up to the point where I am in rewatching or watching The Walking Dead, which is all 177 episodes of The Walking Dead, then I highly suggest that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers. And I guess I have to say this, even though I shouldn't have to. This is my ranking of the season of The Walking Dead. It may not be your ranking of the season, so please make sure to leave your ranking down in the comment section. Smash the like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and be on the lookout for Friday as my plan is to post my top 30 favorite episodes of The Walking Dead, assuming everything goes to plan. And the factors that I used to come up with this ranking, the episodes that happen in the season plays a big role, how often I go back to watch the said season, and how the episodes progress the story of The Walking Dead. Those are the big things that I'm utilizing for this ranking. I like all the seasons of The Walking Dead. It's my favorite show, some more than others. So this isn't necessarily the easiest ranking to do, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Let's start the ranking off again. Beware of spoilers. There has to be 11th place, last place, and my least favorite season of The Walking Dead is season 8. It starts off with Mercy, which was the 100th episode of The Walking Dead. And to me, that episode was a letdown. To some people, they really like it. I don't think it was crazy enough. I think it should have been more of a standalone episode with a lot more crazier things happening. And it just didn't work for me. I know there's some good moments in the episode. But that was the start of what I think was somewhat of a disappointing season. There's a lot of action in this season. I did like the second episode, The Damned. You have the return of Morales after, how many episodes was he gone for? Like 99, 98 episodes of The Walking Dead. And then you kill him off right away in Monsters, which really pissed me off. You have the uh, the Carl episodes, which were, of course, uh, well, very sad. You have it, How It's Gotta Be, where Carl's kind of the leader at Alexandria while Rick is away. And then you find out at the end of the episode that Carl has indeed been bitten and he's going to die. And then you have Honor, the episode where Carl actually dies. So those, they're not my favorite episodes, but they're certainly memorable episodes. My favorite episode in this season is by far The Key. The Damned and The Key are my two favorites. Everything else, in my opinion, it's okay. Lots of action most of the time, but I just felt like, I don't know, they tried to do too much. I think we need an action-heavy episode, and then we need a couple a couple slower episodes to kind of give us time to prepare for more action. That would be my main complaint. It's still a good season. I think the end of the season was kind of lackluster, if you ask me. And I think that's why Scott Gimple kind of stopped being the showrunner of The Walking Dead and became the Kevin Feige of The Walking Dead, which I, he probably was already for the most part, but he got the official title of like chief content, uh, content creator or something like that. But unfortunately, like I mentioned, season eight is in 11th place. Coming in in 10th place, a season that I actually really like, it was a season that had a lot of bottle episodes, which kind of was annoying, but it's still a great season, and that would be Season 7 of The Walking Dead. We, of course, get the crazy premiere of the episode, or I'm sorry, we, of course, get the crazy premiere of the season, The Day Will Come When You Won't Be, which, phenomenal episode, and you'll hear more about that in my top favorite 30 or my top 30 favorite episodes uh, ranking video which I plan to do Friday what a phenomenal start to the season but then we get 
the well. We get the cell. Bottle episodes. Service was okay. I mean, of course, the cell. Easy Street is all I remember from that episode. We do get Go-Getters, which I think is all right. We get Swear, which is one of the worst episodes of The Walking Dead. The Terra Oceanside-focused episode. Sing Me a Song with Carl going to the sanctuary and him kind of bonding with Negan when he was going to kill Negan. I actually like that episode. The mid-season finale, where we see the unfortunate deaths of Olivia and Spencer. Um, Heart's still beating. I forgot the name of it for a second there. Pretty solid episode of The Walking Dead, but it could have been a lot more. And I'm going to take a water break here. Because my lips get really dry, and I don't know why that is. Only when I do YouTube videos. And then... The second half of season seven, I don't really like anything. I do like Bury Me Here, and that's kind of the Morgan Kingdom episode where we get the death of Richard. And uh, then you have, really, the, the next best episode is the finale, these long-titled episodes, The First Day of the Rest of Your Life. I think that's a great episode. Uh, I think the, the season has a good start, a good middle, and a good end, and not much in between though so that's why season seven of the walking dead is going to be in 10th place those are kind of similar now we get to seasons that i really like and i like season seven a lot too season eight is the season that i'm kind of on but i do like seven a lot because of that premiere episode unfortunately we lose glenn and abraham but it's a fucking phenomenal episode of the walking dead so here's where things kind of get a little more grouped together of, well, it's kind of any given day they could flip-flop. Coming in in ninth place, which I know some people put this in 11th place, or, well, 10th before season 11 came out, because the, episode, the season is short, and that would be season one of The Walking Dead. I really like the pilot, or Days Gone By with Morgan and Rick. It's an amazing episode. I did not start with that episode. I did start with season two of The Walking Dead. I think that's really good. The rest of the season, it's good, but I don't think anything is as, as memorable as that pilot episode. And I'm going to IMDb just so I don't forget episode titles as I talk here. I think everything was pretty solid. TS-19 was good. You kind of have Jenner being the villain, like he won't them out. He won't let them out of the CDC because the it's the failsafe or something like that won't won't let you reverse something. Wildfire's good. Vatos is good. Tell it to the frogs, pretty good. Guts, solid season, just not long enough. It if I would have started with season one on The Walking Dead, it may be higher on the list. But as it stands right now, it comes in. In ninth place. Now, here's where some of you will probably start to disagree with me, and I don't blame you. My number eight is going to be season four of The Walking Dead. And you're probably like, huh? There are great episodes in season four, but I think season four also has some of the most overrated episodes of The Walking Dead. A lot of people, and I'm starting in order here, so this is not the episode that I think is the best or people think is the best. 30 Days Without an Accident, it's an okay episode, but some people are like, oh, it's such a great finale. I think the starts, the stuff with at the, uh, the, the Walmart store, it wasn't Walmart, Big Lots or something like that, whatever the, the off-brand name of it was, that stuff was good, but meh, I wasn't super into the episode. Of course, you have Interment. That's one of the best episodes of Walking Dead. Well, maybe not top 10, but certainly will make my top 30 list. Really love that episode. Herschel is fucking amazing. You have the Governor episodes, which I actually don't hate. I know a lot of you say they're the worst episodes in The Walking Dead. There are far worse episodes of The Walking Dead than the Governor episodes in Season 4. 
if you have to have me tell you what those are, there's a few bonus episodes in season 10 that I would say are worse than those Governor episodes. There's an episode in season uh, 7 of The Walking Dead, Swear, the Terra at the Oceanside episode. I'm not a big fan of that episode. Knows it's time. So, yeah, I think the Governor episodes, they're not the greatest episodes, but they're certainly more entertaining than the stuff that's in some of the bonus episodes of season 10 and then Swear from season seven, was it 706. So, that's why, well, I'm not done talking about the season yet, actually. You have one of the greatest episodes of The Walking Dead, Season 4, Episode 8, Too Far Gone. Amazing episode. Definitely a top three, or, well, top four episode for me. And then the second half, you kind of get the bottle episodes where different people are off in different places. And while some of the stuff is really good... I was annoyed by some of the stuff. In fact, none of those episodes are really all that memorable. And then you get one of the worst episodes of The Walking Dead. Although, upon my latest rewatch, was probably about a year ago when I watched the episode again. Still is still one of the dumbest episodes of The Walking Dead. But it's gotten a lot better compared to some of the episodes that have come out recently. That have made that terrible episodes list. But it's not very good. And then a lot of people like The Grove. I think the episode is really boring until Carol has to have that talk with Tyrese. And then, of course, Lizzie, look at the flowers. I don't remember what order the things were. I think she kills Lizzie first and then talks to Tyrese, but I could be wrong on that. Other than that stuff, I don't really like the episode. And a lot of people say, it's oh, it's one of the best episodes of The Walking Dead. First of all, an episode focused on Tyrese as a whole and two random kids that we really haven't got a lot of time with. Carol can't carry an episode like that. Tyrese is one of the worst written characters on The Walking Dead, although this is a decent Tyrese episode. It's not one of my favorites. And then you have the finale, which maybe I need to change my tune on. The finale titled A... It's got some epic moments in the episode. It's not one of my favorites, but maybe I need to watch that episode again because I know there are some moments in the episode that are pretty awesome. But all in all, I'm not really a big fan of the season in general. It's not one of the seasons I go back to to rewatch. It does progress the story of The Walking Dead. It ends the governor storyline, and then we get into the stuff at the sanctuary at the end of the season. Or not the Sanctuary, I'm sorry. We get into Terminus. Terminus is what I meant, not Sanctuary. But all in all, unfortunately, it only comes in at number 7. I'm sorry, number 8 for me. Speaking of number 7, and this pained me to put this season this low, but I had to because there's just other seasons I like a lot more. And the reason why I'm putting this season low has a lot to do with the first half of the season. And I'm talking about The Walking Dead Season 10. Now, again, it has some amazing episodes. It even has six additional episodes, which sometimes that would take away from the season. But if you talk about the first the first eight episodes of the season, I really don't like anything all that much maybe what it always is is the best out of all those everything else it's okay it's not terrible stuff but to me it's not really memorable either the premiere in my opinion lines we cross not memorable i don't want to spend a lot of time talking about episodes that are aren't the greatest they're not terrible again they're just not as memorable to me The second half is a lot better. And then, of course, the season has a third half. You have the the premiere squeeze. I didn't like that whole cave storyline. You have Stalker, which had Beta as Michael Myers at Alexandria. Well, he, he acted like Michael Myers. That stuff was awesome. Morningstar, awesome episode. Walk With Us, Michonne's last episode, well... Was her last episode of The Walking Dead. Uh, Pretty awesome episode. I know some people don't rate that episode very high. 
I like the episode. I like how it shows up shows us a different picture of Michonne. It makes Michonne a savior and uh Michonne the one that potentially kills some of our members of the group. It just I, I really like that episode. It's not one of my all time favorites. It's it certainly has consideration to make my top thirty list, but I just really enjoy that as her uh last episode. What we become is, uh, oh, you know what? What we become is Michonne's last episode. Walk with us is something else. You know what I meant. Sometimes I mess up what episode I'm talking about. Look at the flowers. Nothing special. The tower. Nothing special. The original finale of the season, which I think some would just say this is the finale of season 10. A Certain Doom. I love that episode. I really do love that episode. I know some people wouldn't necessarily say they love it, and some people would even say it's a letdown. I agree that there should have been more shit that happens. We should have got more character deaths. We lost somebody that was a main character at the ocean side. Big fucking deal. We lost Beta. Well, personally, I think we should have lost a couple members of the main group, like Scott. Since this was the last episode that we saw Scott in, why didn't they just kill Scott off? I don't know, you know... Canera Green, who is married to Nico Martin Green that plays Scott on The Walking Dead. Sasha, that's who he's married to, Nico Martin Green. I think it was her parents died in either early 2022 or early 2021. And maybe that's why he didn't come back for season 11 of The Walking Dead. But, I mean, I always thought Scott was going to die. And this episode, I thought for sure he would die in. So... I'm a little annoyed that we didn't get... Because people started caring about Scott because he'd been on the show since season six. So he, it wasn't like he was just just idiot character. I would have preferred more bigger character deaths besides, um, you know, the person that we lost at the ocean side. Uh, just my opinion. I love when Gabriel got put on his back. And then, of, of course, I thought it was Morgan, but it turned out to be Elijah shows up. And then Maggie, awesome stuff there. You get the, you know, Beta in the the horde of walkers, and then you hear, hey, shithead. And then Beta goes after Negan, and then Daryl shows up and stabs Beta with both the knives. That stuff was awesome. You get the stuff with Carol wanting to essentially commit suicide and walk off the cliff to make all the Whisper walkers follow her, follow her, and then Lydia pulls her away. That stuff was awesome. This honestly could have been a series finale of The Walking Dead, and I might have been okay with it. That's how much I like this this episode. It's definitely, well, actually, let me, I was going to say it's my favorite episode of season 10, but we got some bonus episodes to talk about. Home Sweet Home. I actually like that episode. I think it's one of the top 30 episodes of The Walking Dead. I know some of you will be like, huh? The, uh... The Daryl Carol, will little Leah find me? It's okay. I'm having a hard time seeing my screen right now. Don't have any contacts in. Uh, one more with uh, Aaron and Gabriel. I think that's a little overrated. I think I think it's good, but it, it was overrated. Now here's where, well, I talked about some terrible episodes of The Walking Dead. Splinter and Diverged. Those are two of the worst episodes of The Walking Dead. You want to argue with me? Fine. I think they're absolutely horrible with Diverge being the worst one. Basically, Carol trying to catch a a rat or mouse. The whole No, it was a mouse, I think, the whole entire episode. I hated it. And then you have one of the best episodes of The Walking Dead. Here's Negan. I can't remember which one I like more. Here's Negan or A Certain Doom, but those are the two standout episodes in Season 10 for me, along with, of course, Morning Star, Walk With Us, probably Walk With Us. I can't believe I messed up Michonne's final episode with Walk With Us. What will you come is Michonne's last episode. Walk With Us is when Negan, spoiler alert, killed Alpha. We lost uh, Earl in that episode as well. That was sad stuff, but all in all, I like season 10. It's just the beginning of season 10 wasn't the greatest. If the first eight episodes would have been pretty good to great, season 10 could be a lot higher. So that's why it comes in 
at number seven on my ranking. And I'm going to try to talk a little bit less here because I know I'm rambling. I'm already 18 minutes into this. My number six, this is where it gets really tough because I like a lot of these seasons a lot. I'm going to go with season three. It was my the the, episode, the first episode in season three that I really, 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 really liked. Killer Within. That's an amazing episode of The Walking Dead. And I know there, there's, there are some people out there that have like top 10 favorite episode lists or more. And if that doesn't make your top 10, what else would? You get the death of Lori. You get the, the intensity of the, the alarm going off at the prison. And, you know, people are running to try to save people. I think it's just an amazing episode. You get the death of T-Dog. Some people thought the death of Carol. I didn't think Carol was dead, but some people thought she was dead just because she disappeared. I love Killer Within. Uh, that was, at one point, my favorite episode of The Walking Dead, but it's just awesome. The rest of season three, obviously, I like Clear. And I think the mid-season finale is that uh, Made to Suffer. Yes, Made to Suffer. Let me double check here. Again, I can't see. Yes, Made to Suffer, the mid-season finale where you you have the governor with Merle and Daryl going to start fighting to the death. I think that was a good episode. But then the season, it kind of ends on, well, not the best note, in my opinion. The finale of the season three, Welcome to the Tombs, wasn't very good. This Sourful Life, Merle's final episode was good. Pray, where the governor chases Andrea around. That was okay. But Clear, Killer Within, Made to Suffer, I think are the three best episodes in Season 3 of The Walking Dead. I do like to rewatch it, but the impact those... The, the number of great episodes that I really, really like, it's only three versus some seasons where it's like five or six. So that's why season three of The Walking Dead, a season that I really like, comes in in sixth place. My lips are just extremely dry. I'm sorry with all these water breaks here. Coming in at number five, we have season 11 of The Walking Dead. While I think this season has some issues with some of the things that they do, I actually enjoy, for the most part, this season. I think it started off awesome. Acheron Part 1 and Acheron Part 2, if I'm saying that wrong, I have no idea what it's supposed to mean. Acheron, Acheron, whatever you want to call it, those first two episodes, I really liked those first two episodes in like the subway tunnels. I thought those were amazing episodes. And then you have uh, Hunted. I think that was pretty good. And then it kind of gets slow with uh, Rendition, the, the episode with at the Reapers with Pope. The Reaper storyline, in the end, they didn't really do much at all, which kind of pissed me off. So that was kind of my first big issue. Well, first thing I noticed about the season was that. The second thing which is kind of the whole season, taking the whole season to, into account. We don't get a lot of major character deaths. We got a, we get a lot of people of Maggie's previous group at the Meridian that show up at Alexandria and then follow us, you know, around. A lot of her, all the members of her group, except Elijah, uh, end up dying, like Duncan, Frost, Cole. And I like some of those characters, even though they weren't in very many episodes, I liked them. But those were the main character deaths at the beginning. We get one main character death for quite a you know, for a while there, Alden, which was sad, but he kinda his death was kind of anticlimactic. I would have rather had him get killed and die right away than disappear for three or four episodes or however was it three or four? Was it like I don't even remember when we found out that Alden was officially dead, but I feel it took too long. I think that was in the episode 17 I want to say if I remember correctly I think it was episode 7 I don't even remember I've only watched season 11 one time all the way through so my memory on certain things might not be the best there are some episodes that I've watched multiple times like the finale the series finale rest in peace I've now watched nine times yeah I really like the episode so that's the good stuff but we don't get a lot of major character deaths 
on our group side. We get the deaths of Sebastian Milton. We get the death of Lance Hornsby. We get all the people of Maggie's Meridian group. And then, spoiler alert, the series ends on the death of Rosita, Luke, and Jules. You have random characters that just kind of disappear, like Virgil. We don't see any of Scott. We don't see any of Cal. We don't... Diane doesn't die, which I wanted Diane to die. No offense to you that like Diane out there. I really wanted her character to die. So, I think we could have had one major character death at the beginning I'm not saying I want these characters to die, but maybe an Aaron or Gabriel or Jerry. Yes, I don't want these characters to die, but somebody like that should have died in the first eight episodes, and I think it would have made the season a lot better. Second half, we have, let's see here. Okay, was, I'm, I'm losing my place here. Okay, I actually really liked On the Inside, the one episode we really get Virgil for. I think that was a great episode. It reminded me a lot of People Under the Stairs. That was awesome. They should have just had Virgil die in that episode. Promises Broken was okay. For Blood, I think it was a little overrated. Uh, no other way. I think that's the episode we find out that Alden is officially dead in. I think that was a pretty good episode. Uh, certainly will make my top 30 list. I have to watch it again because it's honestly, it's not as memorable, but I remember I liked that episode. Maggie was a badass in that. I think we should have gotten more character deaths other than random Reaper characters. That would have made the season a lot better. Other than that, we've got uh, a couple boring Commonwealth episodes. I liked Warlords. That's when Negan comes back after his break of a couple episodes. Acts of God, the... Uh, Episode 16, I think that was very under or overrated. Like people are like, oh, this is going to be a major awesome episode. And honestly, wasn't that good. I did like the part where Maggie told Negan, I'm starting to trust you. Or I, I don't remember the, exactly what the line was, but I think that was really good. And then the last eight episodes of the season, they were okay. Nothing super special until we get to the finale Rest in peace. Uh, Faith was actually pretty good too. Or not, not Faith. I'm sorry. Family, not Faith. Uh, the finale I thought was awesome. People have their complaints. You can have what other, what other, you can have whatever opinion you want on it. I enjoyed it. I really did. I thought it was beautifully done. I know there's lots of spinoff shows that are happening that it really isn't a finale of The Walking Dead. But, unfortunately, Season 11, with the lackluster character deaths, other than Rosita, and uh, some storylines that really didn't matter in the long run, like the whole Reaper arc, that's why I put Season 11 as my number 5. Now, that might go up, that might go down once I get a chance to rewatch things. So, coming in in 4th place, and this might be an unpopular opinion... I'm actually going to go with Season 2 of The Walking Dead. Now, this was the season that I started on. So I watched Season 2 of The Walking Dead. Then I went to Season 1. And then I was hooked for Season 3 of The Walking Dead. I enjoyed what I saw Season 2. Now, the first episode that I started on, Cherokee uh, Rose, wasn't the greatest. I'll admit it. And there were a couple slow episodes after that, like Chupacabra and uh, Secrets, but then you get the mid-season finale pretty much dead already. Awesome stuff with Sophia coming out of the barn at the end. I did like the premiere, What Lies Ahead. I'm starting to realize there's a lot of people that don't like that premiere. I love it. I thought that was intense uh, as heck. So then you get the second half where things pick up quite a bit, especially with 18 Miles Out, the whole Rick and Shane battle. That's great. You get Judge, Jury, and Executioner. The unfortunate death of Dale. You get Better Angels. The death of Shane and Randall. And then you get an awesome finale. I think one of the best finales of The Walking Dead. I'm not saying it's the best finale, but one of the best. Beside the dying fire. While I know it's a slow season, there's like a lot of great character development in this season. You really get characters developed like Shane. 
you get Andrea, you get Lori, you get Dale, you've got Herschel, you've got Maggie, you've got Glenn, you've got T Dog, you've got uh, Carol. She just does laundry for the most part in this season. I think it's an awesome season of The Walking Dead. Uh, that's why I put season two as my number four. Number three for me, I'm going to go with season five of The Walking Dead. This season has a phenomenal start to it. I absolutely love No Sanctuary. How badass Carol is in this episode. The whole scene with their, you know, them getting their, their, their throat slit and blood coming out. That was crazy intense stuff. You thought maybe... We were going to lose Glenn at that point in time. Carol saving the day. Rick saying, you know, the line that he says, the more of our group meeting Rosita, Abraham, and Eugene. And then you get the end credits scene, which is the one of the biggest moments for me The Walking Dead because I absolutely love Morgan's character. And... I hadn't turned the episode off yet because I used to always watch Talking Dead until the pandemic started. Then I stopped watching Talking Dead for the most part. I just happened to be paying attention still. And they showed that person walk up to those signs of Terminus. And when he took his mask off and it was Morgan, I marked the fuck out. I am not kidding. That was an amazing start to the season. So I really like season five from that point. Strangers was pretty good. Four Rawls in a Roof. Pretty good, although some people like those two episodes a lot more than I do. You get the death of Bob, you get Death's Hand, Tainted Meat, copying Dale from the comic books. The stuff at the hospital, they could have just had Beth be where they are and had Beth die that way. I don't know why they had to have this other storyline with Beth, but I did like it, kind of. I wish we would have got those characters to be utilized a little bit. Like, I thought for sure Dr. Stephen Edwards would become our doctor, and he didn't. He stayed at the hospital. I wonder what he's doing now. I would like to see like a, a Tales from the Walking Dead with those characters that were still left at the hospital, those, those police officers and that cop. I think that would be kind of interesting. So other than No Sanctuary and the, the, uh, the, the, the Terminus people, the, the hunters, to start, those were the only good episodes. You have the finale, Coda, which I think was pretty good. The The biggest moment, of course, being Daryl walking out with Beth's lifeless body in his arms and Maggie having to see that. That was sad. And then you get the second half of the season. You've got them, which uh, I don't think was really good. You get what's happened what's happened, and what's going on. The, the episode where they said it's going to be one of the best episodes of Walking Dead. And I didn't really like it. You find out that Tyrese dies in that episode, which I will go on record saying Tyrese is one of the most underutilized characters on the Walking Dead TV show. Another character that's very underutilized at times, Rosita. Yes, I think Rosita was very underutilized at times during The Walking Dead. The Distance, I think, was a good episode. Remember was okay. Forget was okay. Uh, Spend was okay. Or, and then you get Try was okay, and then Conquer, the finale, you get Morgan coming back to The Walking Dead as a, a character. He's not just a cameo, which actually had a cameo in the mid-season finale as well. Uh, love that episode with Rick. You know, he kills uh, Porch Dick, Pete, at the, the end of the episode, and then Morgan standing there. Rick, great ending to the season. So, I like season five. I, I think it was brutal. And then it kind of did a calm, but you get more stuff that progresses the Walking Dead story when they get to Alexandria. So that's why I chose season five as my number three. And I see that we're 30 plus minutes into me rambling here. That's, I'm sorry. Number two for me, I've made a change. I'm going with season nine. At times, I really like season nine. It was my number one, but I'm putting it at number two now because I think there's not as many crazy, awesome episodes in season nine with the season that I'm going to go with as my number one. Now, obviously, we get Rick's final episode, which what comes after? Phenomenal episode. 
I got no arguments there. The first four episodes, nothing that I really like that much. New Beginning, The Bridge, Warning Signs, The Obliged, nothing super special there. I think The Obliged was the best out of all those. You get where they are, where they are, where are they now? That was okay. Stradivarius, the Michael Cutlass directed episode, that was not that great in my opinion. You get Evolution, which I really liked. You get Adaptation, which was really good. You get the the introduction of the Whispers with the death of Jesus. Crazy stuff. And then going more into the second half, you get Guardians, which I believe that was Beta's first episode of The Walking Dead. And a Choke Point, where it's Bar- Daryl and Beta's first conf- confrontation, where Daryl pushes Beta down into that elevator shaft, and you think Beta might be dead after that. And then you get the calm before. Slow episode. But that ending, even though they kind of kill a lot of not necessarily really important characters or characters that just got developed like Henry. You get Tara, whom for the most part I hated until season nine. I liked her when she first got on the show. And then I started to hate her. And then I started to like her in season nine again. And then, of course, they kill her off. I was really upset about Enid's death. I'm not going to lie. I thought there was more for Enid to do. And they just kind of killed her out of nowhere. So I was upset about that. And then the storm. That's just an episode to give Negan. Hey, I'm trying to redeem myself. I just saved Dog. I just saved Judith. What the fuck? So I really like this season. I just had to put it at number two. Because I only like a few episodes. I like a lot of episodes. But I only really, really like two episodes. Which would be... The Calm Before, and what comes after. So that's why Season 9 is going to be my number 2 now. And by process of elimination, you already know what my number 1 season of The Walking Dead is. And that would be Season 6. I think this season is so crazy. There's so many crazy episodes of The Walking Dead in Season 6. And... It advances the story. You start with First Time Again, which I don't necessarily think is amazing, but there's a lot of people that really like that. And then you get JSS, which I remember watching that episode, kind of closing my eyes, about to doze off, so I made a Facebook post, but I hadn't posted it, saying, well, we got a boring episode of The Walking Dead. Wake me up when it's over. And then the wolves show up at Alexandria, and all hell breaks loose, and it turns into a freaking amazing episode of the walking dead you get thank you which i think is an amazing episode of the walking dead despite the glenn fake out death you get bury me here which is the morgan eastman episode which i actually really like it's a little slower but it's supposed to be here's not here pretty good stuff you get, uh, and then to the, the mid-season finale, it kind of goes in a slow spot. You do get Always Accountable. I think that's the, is that, or is it Heads Up? One of those episodes shows you that Glenn is actually still alive. Start to finish was pretty awesome. You get Deanna's death in that particular episode. They should have saved her character for a few more seasons to develop her a little bit more because I think she would have been more liked than she already is. And then... You get one of my favorite episodes of The Walking Dead. No Way Out. Phenomenal. The Next World, more of an episode for comedy in my opinion. Knots on Tie, it's okay. Then you get Not Tomorrow Yet. I think it's an awesome episode. That's the episode where they go to the Savior Outpost and they kill all the Saviors. Father Gabriel, another great episode for him. He started to be good in No Way Out. And then he wanted to be even better in uh, Not Tomorrow Yet. You get the same boat, which is the episode where the a few of the savior, uh, savior group uh, takes Maggie and Carol hostage. I think that's a crazy good episode. You get twice as far, which is okay. East is yeah, not the greatest. And then a very underrated episode of The Walking Dead, Last Day on Earth. There's a cliffhanger. I get it. However, 
all the stuff before the cliffhanger was intense as shit. They're trying to get away in the RV and they get to another savior roadblock. They turn around, they go a different way, another savior roadblock. That episode is crazy. So you have No Way Out, you have JSS, you have Thank You, you have The Same Boat, you have Not Tomorrow Yet, and you have The Last Day on Earth, which I think are amazing episodes. And that's why season six of The Walking Dead is the season that I go back to rewatch the most and it's my favorite season of The Walking Dead. So I know I've rambled a lot. I'm going to recap this list really quick. 11th place, season 8. 10th, season 7. 9th, season 1. 8th, season 4. 7th, season 10. 6th, season 3. 5, season 11. 4, season 2. 3, season 5. 2, season 9. And my number 1. Season 6. The last time I did this, Season 9 was number 1 and Season 6 was number 2. I don't remember the rest. It was probably pretty similar with without, of course, including Season 11. So, what'd you think? Are we similar or are we way off? Make sure you leave your ranking in the comments section. Like I said before, if you want to help me out with the channel, smash the like button. It goes a long way to help out with the YouTube algorithm. Share this video with anybody you know or put this video on any of your social media platforms. Sound off in the comment section about what your thoughts are. Tell me how would you would rank these seasons. You could tell me your favorite episodes. Remember to watch my channel on Friday for my top 30 favorite episodes of The Walking Dead, barring any random things that come up. And then last but certainly not least, you've made it this far into the video. Don't forget to hit that sub button, subscribe to the channel, join the team, Show your damn support and be a part of something special, and J-Dev will return.